Hello, I'm Seafood Source Editor Sean Murphy, and welcome to another edition of Seafood Source TV, the bi-weekly video blog where we bring you news, information, and insights from the world of the seafood industry. Its proper name is acute hepatopancreatic syndrome. Say that three times fast. It might be easier to pronounce its more common name, though, early mortality syndrome, or EMS. It's deadly to shrimp, and while it's not harmful to humans, if you're a shrimp farmer anywhere in Southeast Asia, it's bound to give you some headaches. That's because since 2009, the disease has been running rampant through shrimp farms throughout the region, costing the industry an estimated total of $1 billion a year. Shrimp farmers in Southeast Asia have enough problems already, including a recent announcement of new import duties by the U.S. Department of Commerce, without having to also worry about a disease decimating their stocks. However, new research appears to have pinned down a cause of the problem to an infected form of the Vibrio parahemolyticus bacteria. Other research from Kinki University and the National Research Institute of Aquaculture in Japan goes further to suggest a cure, or at least a treatment. Balancing the pH in the water where the shrimp live could drive out the bacteria and stop the disease. But is it really that simple? And if so, how will this change the farm shrimp industry both in Southeast Asia and beyond? Well, here to talk with us about that and the future of EMS and the shrimp industry is George Chamberlain. He's the president of the Global Aquaculture Alliance, joining us today via Skype from the nonprofit organization's offices in St. Louis, Missouri. George, thanks for being with us today. Uh, my pleasure, Sean. Nice to be here. Let's get into the, the second, uh, the newer research, which uh, your organization first told us about and told the world about, uh, so I'm sure you're familiar with it, talking about balancing pH. Now, uh, for the benefit of the non-biochemists out there, uh, including myself, uh, Let's, uh, without getting into too much detail, can you tell us kind of a, an overview of what pH is and how is this a factor in this issue? Yeah, pH is the balance between acid and base, and the range is from 0 to 14, and 7 is considered a neutral pH, neither acid nor base. And the pH of seawater normally, full strength seawater normally runs about 8.2, a little on the alkaline side. And it turns out that EMS uh, manifestation is stimulated or triggered by high pH around 8.5 to 8.8 .8, and inhibited by low pH, let's say less than 8, maybe uh, even less than 7.5. So um, this, this was discovered by a uh, farmer, a uh, farm manager named Noriaki Akazawa, who manages a shrimp farm in Malaysia called AgroBest, which is owned by the seafood trading company Maruha. It's a large farm with 460 ponds, and it was producing about 11,000 tons per year of fanime. And uh, this particular farm has excellent record keeping and they know exactly when EMS hit. It came in with uh, a batch of post larvae from an outside hatchery. So it is transmitted, apparently is transmitted by infected post larvae and probably also by infected broodstock. And it started in five ponds. All five of those ponds came from post larvae from that same hatchery. But actually, there were more than five ponds stocked from that hatchery. So not every pond from the, from the origin caused the disease. And that was the first clue that there was something else going on. And uh, one of the remarkable t tips or uh, hunches that uh, Akazawa got was when he brought some infected animals from pond that were morbid, they were laying on their side, they were about to die. He brought them into the lab, put them in an aquarium, and ran back out to the pond. He expected to find them dead when he returned to the lab, and he found they were perfectly fine, standing upright, swimming around, and they stayed fine for another week, and you know, until he finally released them. And the question was, what happened? How come they were dying in the pond? And how come they recovered when I put them in the aquarium? <laughs> and long story short, after many trials, he determined the difference was the pH. The pond was experiencing a high pH, which caused the disease to manifest. And the tank was at a much lower pH, 
and the disease regressed. So managing the pH is one of the methods to try to control the manifestation of the disease. Well, what's interesting, you know, you mentioned managing the pH. I mean, it seems like anybody who has a backyard pool will know something about how to do that. So, I mean, it, it seems like a tantalizingly simple uh, solution to a one billion dollar a year problem. Is it really as simple as saying, hey, just make sure you maintain proper pH and you won't have to worry about this condition? Or, you know, are, are you guys not so sure? Well, first of all, I think it's much more than a one billion dollar problem. I think it's a billion dollars just in Vietnam and probably more than a billion dollars also in Thailand. And, and if you add it all up, I think it's a multi-billion dollar a year problem. But you're right. Uh, managing pH is is uh, actually de deceptively uh, difficult because pH is affected by many factors in the pond, both biological and chemical. And one of the main factors driving pH up is photosynthesis. Um, the, the common denominator for pH in the pond we could think of as the carbon dioxide. When carbon dioxide is dissolved in water, some of it forms acid, carbonic acid. So the more carbon dioxide in the water, the more acidic the water, and the less, the more alkaline. Well, during photosynthesis, uh, during the daylight hours, the plants in the pond, the microscopic algae, will photosynthesize, which means they absorb that carbon dioxide and produce oxygen. And by removing the carbon dioxide from the water, they drive the pH up during the afternoon. So pH can, it typically climbs every single day and reaches a peak in late afternoon and then it declines at night when those plants respire and put the CO2 back in the water. So every day there's a, there's a bell-shaped curve and pH that reach, reaches its peak in the afternoon. The okay. other group of organisms that affects pH are the bacteria and they as they uh, metabolize organic matter in the pond, they produce carbon dioxide, and that drives the pH down. So the more bacteria in the water, the lower the pH will be. So we know that some of the farms that are using intensive systems and what are called bioflocks, which are bacterially driven systems, tend to run consistently low pH levels, and they anecdotally report that they have less trouble with EMS. So managing algae and bacteria blooms is part of the, uh, that's part of the solution for managing EMS. But a lot of that is driven by just managing the nutrients in the water, not overfeeding, not over fertilizing. A lot of the basic methods that we've used in the past to stimulate a good phytoplankton bloom before we stock the shrimp don't really apply in the case of EMS. In fact, they're counterproductive. So instead of taking two weeks to prepare a pond and get a really rich phytoplankton bloom that's a lot of natural food, a lot of farmers now are stocking right away before they get a plankton bloom because they don't want to expose those host larvae to a high pH. So but let me let me just also comment that focusing only on this one issue of pH is probably misleading. One of the biggest issues, I think, is contamination of the post larvae with EMS coming out of the hatchery. So if the farmer is uh, already facing infected post larvae, then he already is a step behind in the process of managing the disease. So really the first step is to make sure that the brood stock going into the hatchery are free of EMS, that the hatchery keeps those post larvae free of EMS through proper biosecurity, that the farm uses proper management to avoid high pH and keep the nutrient levels under control, and then also the feed is likely to be part of the solution. Imagine this disease colonizes the stomach of the shrimp, so it would be easily influenced by the feed. And if the, if the organism is affected by high pH, maybe it's possible to modify the pH of the stomach 
by using additives in the feed. So really, when you think about it, the entire production chain is part of the process. Breeding, hatchery, farm, and feed. And so really the solution to the disease is going to require a more integrated approach, a full so, production chain uh, process. It's, I think that only by controlling the full process do we have much hope of really controlling this disease. And it's a little bit more difficult when we look at the Asian situation where most of the farms are run by very small operators and many of the hatcheries are run by small operators as well. So I think one of the indirect side effects of this disease is going to be more consolidation and integration in the industry, which is uh, actually was recently predicted by Rabobank in their report called Shrimp in a Crimp. They basically said that uh, there's a need to con for greater control of biosecurity in the Asian industry, and this will in fact lead to consolidation and integration in the sector, and I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, talk about a consolidating the seafood industry is uh, not a new idea. We've been seeing that trend in the past couple of years, and, and talk is that it's going to continue. Um, so it sounds like EMS is a problem that may have a somewhat, it may suggest a simple solution, but it's a more complex solution than some might think. Well, uh, we, we've heard conflicting reports about how much this uh, new revelations of this new research is actually going to help the problem, and therefore how much it's going to affect the market. Uh, we've heard different opinions. Some have said that uh, that this will lead to some uh, pr producers being able to lick EMS and therefore there's going to be a bumper crop of shrimp that it might affect prices in some way. W what's your take on that? Do you think that we're going to see any kind of drastic change anytime soon with uh, controlling EMS in Southeast Asia? Unfortunately, I don't see any silver bullet, any immediate cure. I think the management solution is uh, a comprehensive one. It's going to require proper breeding, hatchery management, good quality pond management, and that's, a, you know, if you can imagine today, many shrimp farmers don't even own a pH meter, and they don't measure their nutrients and, and track bacteria levels or understand this problem. It's a, it's a bit of a paradigm shift for them to more carefully control the ponds in this way. So I, I don't see um, immediate solutions. I think this is going to take a year or two, or maybe more, for a full recovery. I think it's, uh, I think it's going to be a, a slow, steady process where the companies that uh, work on getting the full control of the system will probably have the better results. It sounds like it's fairly accurate to say, though, that the companies that succeed will be the ones that are able to manage the pH and, and hopefully can help control this disease in the long term. That's right. It's, it's a question of biosecurity through the whole process, um, you know, managing disease and managing the environment. And I think it's, it's all part of the evolution of this business. It seems like um, every few years we see the impact of another disease and inevitably the response is to tighten the controls and as we do that the industry is getting more and more consistent uh, the controls are helping to prevent other diseases and uh, you know over time these 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 uh, factors also improve the sustainability the environmental sustainability there's less water exchange there's less transmission of disease uh, so I think overall the, the health of the business improves uh, even though it's becoming more complex more difficult uh, to manage I think in the long run the controls are helpful a fairly simple problem with a very complex solution suggested thanks very much for your time George Chamberlain really appreciate the insights my pleasure Sean thank you for having me George Chamberlain is the president of the Global Aquaculture Alliance, talking to us today about EMS and the problem with the shrimp industry in Southeast Asia. And uh, you can bet the, uh, that uh, George and many other people from the Global Aquaculture Alliance will most likely be on hand at Goal 2013. We should mention that. It's going to be the annual, the Aquaculture Alliance's annual conference. It's going to be taking place this year in Paris, France 
on October 7th through 10th. And you can be sure that Seafood Source TV is going to be on hand to bring you full coverage, video and written, of everything that's going on at the conference. I'm sure EMS is going to be a very important topic to be discussed there then. And meanwhile, keep, uh, keep watching SeafoodSource.com again in another two weeks, and you will see another version of Seafood Source TV, where we bring you more news, information, and insights from the world of the seafood industry. Till then, I'm Seafood Source Editor Sean Murphy saying thanks for watching, and we'll see you online.